Mansour Adaifi, known to DeSantis as Detainee 441. Mansour, sold to the U.S. by Afghan warlords after 9-11, was a totally innocent teenager held at Guantanamo Bay from 2002 until 2016, so he has a robust knowledge of life and torture at Gitmo. He told me that not only was DeSantis there for what he called the worst year of his entire imprisonment, but DeSantis was a notorious figure who didn't just know about, but observed and participated in illegal acts of torture and in fact seemed to take great pleasure in their suffering. He reveals that the job of DeSantis was not to ensure human rights were respected, but to ensure that they were violated to the worst degree. Just a warning, the following interview contains some graphic descriptions of torture. It was a mission and he was there. All of them were was watching the, the colonel, officers, you know, doctors, nurses, and not just that, they used to also beat us. And if we scream or pain, bleeding came off on our nose and mouth, they were like, eat. The only word they told you, eat, eat, eat. This is a shocking uh, revelation, at least in my mind, of intersection between this particular detainee in Guantanamo and Ron DeSantis. Apparently, new leader of the Republican Party, at least is what's what it's trying to do. On uh, the backgrounds and his his, his, uh, his interactions with this detainee at Guantanamo Bay, um, this particular prisoner is talking about it on multiple uh, stages, and also has written a book. So let's a uh, little details about this guy. Mansour Adafi was held. Uh, at Guantanamo Bay without charges and without trial between 2002 and 2016. He was handed over to, to the CIA as an 18 year old goat farmer. And Adafi says Ron DeSantis oversaw the worst acts of torture during his time there. There's a picture of him as you see there. And since his transfer to Serbia, Adafi has written a book and spoken to outlets, as I mentioned, like the New York Times about his imprisonment. Here's that book, you guys. It says, Don't Forget Us Here. I didn't know any of this was going on. I'm gonna have to check that out uh, to see the things that he said. And first, when I heard this this morning, Emily was pitching this to me and I was like, what? There's no way this is all adding up and is on the up and up because I didn't hear about it, but apparently I missed it. Here's some of that stuff that he was talking about with New York Times. They said he spent 14 years at Guantanamo and this is his story. Uh, he also spoke, as you guys heard there with the eyes left podcast with Mike Prisoner about DeSantis. More details about what was going on with DeSantis and his imprisonment there. Uh, let's check out how he said he first met Ron DeSantis and the way he came into his life like a, a glowing figure. Let's go. So we went again on hunger strike, we were on force feeding. You know, it was really, it was torture, we were bleeding all the time. And I saw a handsome person who was coming, he said, I'm here to ensure that you're treating humanely. And we said, okay, this is our demand. You know, we were not asking for much, you know. At the beginning, he was just- It was Ron DeSantis. Yes, exactly, the person. He said, I'm here to ensure you're being treated humanely. Yes, exactly, and if you have any, if you have any uh, problems, if you have any concerns, if you have, just talk to me. And you know, we, 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 we were drowning in that place. I'm like, oh, this is cool. That person actually uh, writing something. He will raise the concerns, but it was piece of the game. What they what they were doing, they were they were looking what hurt you more to use it against you. By the end of 2005, 2006, when he was there, one of the worst time at Guantanamo, literally. Some of the worst time at Guantanamo Bay. Literally, once this guy entered his life. Somehow it got worse for that one year. Uh, he went through some of those even worse torture methods that they went through with them, as he described here. Uh, let's go for more. First feeding, I swear by my God, Mike, they brought you know piles of insure and they start force feeding us over and over again. And uh, Ron DeSantis was there and watching us. We were crying, screaming. We were tied to the feeding chair, and that guy he was watching that he was laughing basically. It was hurt like hell. And I was screaming like when I was I was screaming and look at him, and he was actually smiling like as someone who enjoying it. <laughs> when they used to feed us because we you can the, the, our stomach cannot hold this amount of insulin. They used to pour insulin one can after another, one can after another. So when he approached me, I said, "This is the way we are treated." He, he said, "You should start to eat." I threw up in his face, literally on his face. Ron DeSantis. And his face, yeah. They used to. You know, restrain us in the in the, the feeding chair, which like you know, like eight point. They tied our our heads, our shoulder, our our wrist, our thighs, and our legs. And they came, and that was really thick tube. They call it uh, French seventeen or something through our nose. And 
they keep doing this over and over again, and they put some kind of um, laxative in the in the feeding liquid, which like we in ourselves all the time. Mansoor, they're describing some of the uh, force feeding that they went through as well. Many times we hear about the waterboarding only that was going on at Guantanamo, but of course there was the force feeding, there was the sleep de deprivation, there was the beating, as he was pointing out throughout that interview, and the constant bleeding and the isolation and cold cells, all these things that were going on on and on and on again. But I was like, wait, Ron DeSantis doesn't talk about this. It must not really have been happening, at least with him being there. I was wrong. In his run for governor this year, DeSantis is spotlighting his time at Guantanamo as a key credential. Yet details about what exactly DeSantis did during his historic period are limited. His campaign declined to make the candidate available to discuss the experience. I wonder why. But the Miami Herald did interview officers who did work with DeSantis there at the time that he was there. And they described his role the same way that Mansoor did, Adafi did, to advocate for the fair and humane treatment of prisoners. Of course, they'll say that. But of course, the prisoners said that didn't happen that way. One more part about this before we jump in here with you, Jackson. Among other things, though, DeSantis helped to make sure that the detainees could meet and share information with their attorneys. This is what they were saying. That's what retired Naval Captain Patrick McCarthy said in an interview. If any complaints were raised, Ron would have been among the folks I sent down to talk to the detainees, said McCarthy. He added that DeSantis would have found out what the complaints were and made sure that they were addressed in a way that was consistent with the law. But Adafi finished off this whole thing by warning Americans about who DeSantis really is, despite the things his officer said, and despite the things that he won't say in this one last piece. You're saying that DeSantis initially, because he presented himself as the lawyer whose job it was to ensure you're being treated humanely, then you and other detainees told him the things that were the hardest for you to deal with, the things that you felt needed to change. And then instead of actually making sure those things changed and that your human rights are respected, he then basically like was gathering intelligence to then tell the prison camp and the interrogators what it was that was impacting you most so they could do it more to you. Exactly, that would have been there because the things we used to tell them it turn against us. Everything we talked to him become multiple because he was looking at the impact on you, what hurt you more. Ron DeSantis was there all the time because his job to walk around and talk to prisoners. Like, I'm here to ensure you're being treated humanely. I'm like, I'm telling Americans, if this, if this guy, if this, if this is humanity, this guy is torture, is a criminal. It's just a matter of Americans will listen to the stories, Jackson. What's your thoughts, bro? So, um, there's uh, several things. Um, first, I'll start with uh, just I think this really puts front and center the issue with uh, our two party system, one vote per election, um, lack of choice, political structure that we have. Because the reality is, is that um, when it comes to the Republican base, uh, many people simply will shrug this off, won't believe it, say it's fake news. Then there's the portion who it may bother them, it may not, but they're gonna shrug it off as well because they're not gonna vote for a Democrat. And perhaps they're uh, some of the people that are growing um, angst against Donald Trump. And then you have uh, the portion of the base that's gonna like stuff like this because of how they view people from that region of the world. And then um, also importantly, uh, this is an example of why Guantanamo Bay needs to be shut down and why kind of uh, situations and environments like this really bring the worst out of us. Uh, because you have people who are in high positions of power and relatively unmonitored uh, with complete bodily authority over people who the culture and propaganda spews as evil and, and, and satanic and, and stuff like that. And again, that naturally, um, especially when people who are already steeped in, in, in sadism, that's gonna bring that out. And so um, it's good that this report is coming out because it's just further evidence why Guantanamo Bay needs to be shut down. It's, it's uh, similar to where we say, you know, many uh, cops may take the job, at least the abuse of kind, take the job because for that opportunity to have that kind of immunity to do these types of things. So when it comes to a military level, and we're talking about detainees at Guantanamo Bay post 9-11, oh my God, nobody cares about these humans. Are they humans? They can do whatever they want to them because who's gonna stop them? As we saw, the person that was supposed to be part of helping with maybe their human rights was actually, according to one of these detainees, was a part of the problem that made it even worse. The worst damn year of his life there. Again, you can listen to all of that on the Eyes Left podcast with Mike Prisoner. 
Preisner, sorry, and he uh, and he was talking to them in more and more detail about what it was that went down there. It's fascinating. I, I had no idea. But then again, even if Ron DeSantis did tell his followers and his voters and supporters about this, as you point out, Jackson, I think there's that significant percentage is like, f yeah, more. Yeah, that's because it, it, it's they're gonna see it as you know strength against our enemies. So yeah, that's what they've been told.